Welcome back everybody as King Baby continues to play Shadowgate. From where we last left off, we got the wood flute from the Acid Fountain and moved forward into uh, basically the foyer, uh, past that into like an area with four or five doors. Uh, this area here. And this banquet hall, I guess you would call it. And tried using several keys uh, to move forward, but that was kind of unsuccessful. So. We're going to move forward into here. This is where we last left off. We checked out the room. <coughs> Excuse me. And we um, checked out everything here. So let's. we're going to continue moving up here by this red ladder here. Oh, and this happens. A large fireball suddenly appears in the room and causes you to shield your eyes. When you open them, you notice that the fire has changed into something far more menacing. It looks like a puppy. Let's take a look. The hellhound makes this hot room even hotter. Um, there must be a way to cool the room off before you roast. Okay. Well, being that we are an armored knight, this dog should pose no problem because I believe steel is much better than teeth, uh, especially when you are armored with steel and um, have a weapon of steel. So let's take, actually, we're gonna do this the way I would actually do. I'm gonna take a war hammer, uh, being that I like blunt objects and smack the shit out of this dog. The demon dog snarls and pounces on you. Its teeth sink deep into your flesh. I am so disappointed right now in our hero that I don't think I've ever been more disappointed in my life. That's embarrassing. Seriously, I'm embarrassed. A dog. Looked like a Rottweiler. Bit us to death. We have all these weapons. Got my glasses on, got my cloak on. I'm styling and profiling. And I just got bit somehow through my armor, which is... I believe I am in full plate, which... I think I've said this like three or four times. I'm tired of saying it, to be honest. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a Rottweiler. So, uh, what you actually have to do here is... I actually want to find it first before I tell you. Um, brrr, where the hell is it? No, seriously. Oh, there. It's kind of nondescript of this water here. Let's take a look at it. The glass vial is filled with clear liquid. The sign of the cross is on it. So, basically, what you have to do is take this holy water from the laboratory, or as the British say, laboratory, and use it on the hellhound to cool him down. He's hot. The holy water has sent the hellhound back to the place where it was spawned. See ya, buddy. The flame died out. The room is quiet, as though nothing has happened. Or had happened. Whatever it said. Can I take the sweet instrument? Yes, the horn is in hand. Want to take a look at that horn? This horn is forged of flawless platinum, yeah. We've seen that before. So I can pawn that shit for like mm, a few grand. The hell I can. What do you mean? Move up. All right, we'll do it the hard way. Mm. Oh boy! As you stand on the turret, an eerie blue dragon appears in the clear, starry sky. Hi, can I speak to you? You look nice. It doesn't seem to understand what you say. Uh, apparently we, be, we came in here unprepared because we've tried to speak to several creatures from banshees to sharks to dragons to drakes to hellhounds to lab dogs and nothing understands us and I'm, I'm, I'm very quite upset about that. So, let's look at it. It's a wyvern. This beastie is a distant cousin of a dragon, but is smaller and fiercer. Yeah, I'm glad they actually explained that because a wyvern is a type of dragon, but picture it kind of like a bat 
more than a dragon. Yes, it's much bigger than a bat, but this guy's a lot smaller, um, but is a lot more aggressive, as it explains. Coming from a guy who has played D&D. Uh, that is Dungeons and Dragons to you, layman folk. So, here's what I would do. Got a lot of protection on us. I am going. No, I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna use a sword. That son of a bitch is standing like right over this railing. I'm gonna carve his ass neck right off, like right here. Maybe stab him in the eye or two. All right. With the speed of lightning, the wyvern wraps its tail around your neck. You die, screaming silently. Hmm. I think the creators forgot to remember that you're wearing armor. So, at this point, I'm thinking that obviously they forgot that the tail of a wyvern would not be able to uh, kill you. I don't know. What I thought this thing would do is basically like carry you off, which it's, it's huge. This thing's probably like you know, 2,000 some pounds can fly, would, would pick you up and then drop you from like 100 feet where you'd fall to your death, but there's no way uh, this, this creature could probably penetrate steel, but anyway, believe it or not, there's nothing I can do here at this point, um, so we'll take a look around. The sky foretells the coming of a great storm, um, that's kind of hard to believe because it looks clear to me with some stars and clouds, but like, it's not super cloudy. And what do we have here? Mm, don't want to explain the wall? Let's talk about this thing. This rather heavy talisman is made of gold and is extremely sharp along its edges. It shines with an incredible brilliance. Okay, so at this point we can't do anything. And we have to move back here. Back to this uh, area. So, what I actually need to do, I have to two take Take these things that are in this room, and you'll find out in a little bit why. I'm not sure all of them are needed, but... Um, oh, Christ. There we go. Can't take that tapestry, but I know this is used, and as is this, too. The room I really want to open up is the one to the right, which I know we have one of the keys, so I'm going to just start from key one and work our way. Eh. When I say keyhole, I mean, I'm wondering if I'm not lining it up correctly, so we'll do it from here. Okay, so key two. Key three. Key four. Key five, key six, key four. Here we go. So we have six keys total. All right. How about five? down the tube. Oh boy, there it goes, boys and girls. Click, the key worked. It unlocked the door. Man, you know what? These writers probably decided that because of trial and error, man, you're going to get excited when this door opens. Look how excited they are. And apparently I see between two or three sentences, six explanation marks, and I agree with this. So, let's move. It appears to be a sphinx. It looks at you indifferently. Mm. Uh, indifferently, I'm guessing, like, let's put it on a good, evil, neutral scale. This guy's neutral. So he's kind of like, meh, you're here. Not worried about you. But don't really want to talk to you either. So he's, you know, he's a kitty. Which, that's how kitties are, man. Let's look around. 
Through this portal, you can see the moon hovering over the darkened mountains. Okay. We've seen that term about four times by now. How about the torches? The strange, eerie flame burns silently. Alright. How about these stairs with the weird symbols? It's a stairway leading upward. There seems to be some strange mark scratched into its side. Okay. And let's look at the kitty, because he's awesome. You have stumbled upon a sphinx. It has the body of a lion and the head of a man. Okay. Well, we're going to stop here, guys, today. Um, anyway, thank you for joining me. Um, we're getting very close to ending this game, and I'm having a lot of fun with it, so hopefully you guys are too. So, until next time, we get to talk to a kitty. And that's a spoiler, because I believe... This is the only creature you get to use the speak command here, too. And we'll explore his options because he's awesome. Because, yeah, he's a kitty, and everybody loves kitties. So, later, guys.